Yeah, this is miserable. Finally, dry layer. Jesus fucking Christ. Really? So this shit's gonna be after all that. Mississippi today. Um, it's a little bit later than I wanted it to be, but I left out of my, well, I got up about three o'clock this morning and then left out of the house about four. Um, I'm not quite to Mississippi yet, but I'm getting, uh, getting there. So I'm going to basically be hitting kind of the northern half of the state today. And um, one of my targets is, of course, milk snakes. So I'm going to be trying to uh, find milk snakes in a new area. I've never been up here. I've never explored any of this stuff before. Um, I've only really ever herped the southern half of Mississippi, uh, basically looking for diamondbacks and pine snakes in, in some of the, the uplands uh, in, in the southern half of the state. Uh, so this is going to be new for me. I'm basically going to be out here by myself most of the day, uh, trying out some new areas. You know, it's really hard to find uh, cover on satellite, but I ended up finding a few places. But I think that I've got a lot of places that have some potential uh, to flip some snakes. And of course, I'm going to be keeping my eyes out for uh, any different things that I see while I'm on the way. Maybe try to look into the woods uh, as I'm driving through some of these areas and see what I can spot uh, just off the side of the road. Because uh, it is still a little bit early in the year. Uh, leaf out hasn't quite completed yet. Uh, so there is still good visibility into the forest, uh, forest edge as you're driving through some of these places. So, um, probably not going to get to any of my flip spots for another hour and a half or so. It's a little bit later in the morning than I like to start, but, uh, it's pretty cold today. So I think maybe, uh, it's going to be a little bit better thing to allow things to warm up a good bit. Um, I don't really have any expectations for today. I'm not really sure what uh, I expect as far as snakes to find. Um, I'm always hoping, of course, for lampras. I'm hoping to see uh, what the, the king snakes look like in this region. Uh, I'm excited, excited uh, to hopefully pull out some milk snakes from this. But I'm sure there's going to be uh, possibilities of cane breaks. Um, maybe corn snakes? Because now that I'm over on this side of the Mississippi, uh, corn snakes should be in these regions so that'll be really cool to see if i can uh pop up one of those uh and who knows what they're gonna look like i do like i always like the look that corn snakes get when you're a little bit higher elevation they seem to kind of get more silvery uh than those bright oranges you know I, I love orange and, and and red on milk snakes but i'm just not as big of a fan of it on corn snakes for whatever reason i think it's just the pet store look so i like those more unique looking uh mountain corns or, or hopefully the kind of hilly look that i uh, think that maybe these are gonna have so uh, anyhow uh, after I get to my first spot start getting some flip flips and uh, see what we turn up today so I'll catch up with you guys then all right not quite out of Louisiana yet I just had to stop and check a couple of places here I just you know I just can't pass by this kind of stuff without giving it a little bit of a look you know she just kind of Mm. 
Ooh, big rat snake. Yeah, that's a nice big rat snake. Cool. Oh, and another rat. No, that's a racer. Rat and a racer, big dude. Cool, all right. Louisiana indigo. All right, let you guys go back to your relaxation. It'll warm up in a little bit. Yeah, just like that. I go through this little set. Got a little bit of warmth on that top layer. So I think that's a good sign for the rest of the day. Alright. This back over. And then the enjoy your day. Racer. Yeah. A lot of snakes up. A racer. Hey there, buddy. All right. Let you go back under your cover. Cool. First snake, Mississippi. A ring neck. Mississippi ringneck in Mississippi. Dude packs punch, he smells. Alright. I'm getting somewhere. Oh, it's even got some layers for me.
Oh, you cotton. Ugh. That's gross. Been a while since I've seen a snake. Hey, yeah, a big dude. That is a big ugly racer. All right, You're nice and warm, huh? That's a good thing. Besides, racer. Every fucking place has stinging, nasty things. Oh, hey. That's an owl. Wow. That's super cool. Well, I'm not gonna mess with you. Alright. Wow. Well, that was worth stopping here. That, that, no worries, that. I just want to get a little photo. You chill. Huh? Yep, you scared me. Yeah, you scared me. Yep, it worked. Alright, so it's been a pretty tough morning so far. Uh, I, I mean, I have found a handful of snakes, a few ringnecks, racers, rat snakes. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, but also, I've, I haven't really had a lot of cover that uh, I had scouted on satellite images. And basically most of the stuff that I found today, I just was driving by, saw it, and, uh, and hopped out to go look at it, and uh, have had varied amounts of success. Some of it's been better than others. Uh, but I'm now finally getting up into an area where it looked like there is some decent cover uh, on satellite images, so maybe I'll start to have a little bit more luck here. Uh, but one cool thing, I, I did get to see that, um, I guess I really, I don't have a clue what kind of owl it was. Maybe a, I, I want to say a great horned owl, but I really have no idea. Um, God, I should probably look into that. Uh, but anyhow, seeing that owl is really cool. But there just hasn't been a whole lot of snakes today. I've flipped a lot of stuff. Um, but there's been, you know, again, varied amounts of success with that. Uh, with the, the most significant finds were racers. Ugh. All right, so I talked to the old man up the road. I saw him when I was coming in and I decided to walk over back there and talk to him before I started digging into this and uh, give me permission to look through this. So I'm excited to see what I get. I uh, asked him about milk snakes and it seems like he gave me the kind of same answer most people give me out here is uh, they're rare. But, I'm not sure how much I believe that. I think rarely seen and rare are a couple of different things.
Racer. Something in here. Finally. Yeah. Damn. Come on. There's the milk hat. So it's been a pretty fun day of exploring. I can't say I've found you know, all the snakes that I'd hoped that I would find today, um, but I still actually have quite a few spots and really some of the best spots that I'd found on satellite. Um, I still have those and I'm saving those for tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be a little bit warmer. Uh, it seems like it's gonna be just a generally a better day for herping. Um, so what I did today is basically sticking down to uh, some bottom lands and I think really what's happened is it's so cold because uh, it's been, you know, essentially uh, just a little bit below freezing the last couple of nights. And uh, it's been so cold and it's so wet that honestly there's just like nothing flipping under uh, tin and boards and stuff in the bottoms. And basically all that stuff's wet. Uh, I ended up with a few racers, ring necks, a couple of copperheads. Um, it wasn't a bad day, but I did actually get some leads on finding milk snakes, and I have, I now actually have access to a property up here. Um, it was actually the, the best, one of the best like bottom land flip spots I'd found. Um, I went out to, and I like, I didn't think I was even going to be able to make it down the road because it was so flooded. Um, but I went out there and ran into the old man that, that owns the property. Started talking to him, asking him if I could go flip the tin. I go flip it, find a little racer, and um, ended up talking to him for probably about 30, 45 minutes. And um, now I've got access to go back out there whenever I want. So, um, you know, it's, it's useful to go talk to these people. You know, I, I know it's always, uh, hard, especially if you've got a site that you really want to go visit, you know, you don't want to get shut out of it um, by talking to somebody and, and them telling you no, but uh, honestly, especially with, and uh, you know, this is not like stereotyping, but honestly with older people, um, they often just want to talk and they're happy to talk to somebody and, and see somebody uh, who's got an interest so strong. Now this isn't going to be everybody, but I've found uh, that's often the case, especially with, you know, the old men who like to talk a lot. Um, and this guy was no exception. Really nice dude. And uh, he's got 260 acres. And it's all really nice bottomland habitat. He says that he's seen milk snakes rarely, but he has seen them there. Um, but importantly, he's got stacks. He's got lots of stacks. Uh, I found some snake eggs in those stacks. Um, it just it just looks really good. It felt really good, and I was really honestly expecting to see something. But if it wasn't so cold and wet, uh, I, I think that the chances of that would have been greater. And he even said that, yeah, you know, it's, it's been so cold lately, it's kind of knocked everything back. And um, you know, he says once it warms up, he's, usually there's snakes everywhere. So. Um, in my experience, most people aren't going to see the milk snakes, and they're going to have a uh, impression that they're rarer than they actually are because it's a secretive animal. And honestly, the best way to go find a milk snake is digging through a stack of tin. Uh, how many people do that other than herpers? So, um, I also wanted to point out one thing that really helped with that interaction is wearing this vest. So, uh, I'm not wearing this to comply with any sorts of law. I'm wearing this to uh, diffuse tension when I encounter other people. So if I'm uh, going on a property that looks abandoned and, you know, for all intents and purposes it should be, um, but I see somebody else out there, somebody comes by and wonders what I'm doing, uh, if I've got this orange vest on, that immediately tells them I'm not trying to hide, I'm not trying to do anything um, illegal, I'm not trying to do anything bad to their property. Usually, they wonder or they might think that I'm you know some sort of worker or whatever and I never try to use subterfuge to, to to play along with that I always will tell them no I'm out here looking for snakes and I've never had any really kickback from that 
Um, you know, they, they're always really curious, you know, about, oh, you're going to look for snakes, let's start talking to you about them. Uh, and usually that's a great opportunity to start getting permission to get into uh, that property uh, or even nearby properties, finding other stuff nearby that they know about that you just haven't seen or don't, you know, don't think that you can get access to. Um, a lot of these people, once you start talking to them, they're, they're happy to talk about the stuff that they know about and help you out. Um, you know, we, it seems like there's this misconception among Harpers and, and people in general that um, that they're going to get shut down or that they need to be sneaky or they, they need to tell some sort of fabrication as to why they're out digging through tin in a barn. Just tell, you, tell them you're looking for snakes. Uh, that, that, that will always set people off guard. And if you're wearing like an orange vest like this, um, they're they immediately know that you don't mean any harm, that you're not there to rob them, you're not there to take their tin, um, you're there for some purpose, right, for, for something that's not um, illegitimate, so to speak. So, anyhow, that's just kind of how I feel about that, and I think that more people should take that stance, especially when they're, they're going out, and, um, you know, we we like to explore abandoned properties and stuff where there's a bunch of tin falling on the ground. Uh, and I'm not talking about like hopping fences and stuff. I'm just talking about driving up to a place, you see a bunch of tin out. Uh, maybe there's somebody down the road who owns it and, you and they come, you know, come up and like, what are you doing? Um, usually they don't care because it's like, it's garbage, right? And they, they realize that. Uh, yeah, there's some crazy people that are obsessed about their garbage. It's a different story. Um, but you got the vest kind of diffuse that tension, you tell them you're looking for snakes, it catches them off guard, and it really starts a great conversation where you can really get your foot in the door to actually do more than what you intended to do there. So uh, that's how I feel about that, and hopefully uh, you guys can get something out of that. Maybe um, let me know if you agree, you know, let me know if, uh, if there's anything that uh, you do differently that, that you find works really well for you in uh, getting access to places that you want to go hurt. Um, so I just saw a board. I got to turn around and I'm going to go check on that. That's fucking beautiful. I've been hoping all day for a king.